What's going on everybody? It's your fishing buddy back with another video for y'all. I'm in Spana Blantes. Bienvenidos. It's tu compañero de pesca. Aquí otra vez con otro video de consejos de pesca para ustedes. And today I want to talk to y'all about a technique that's never gonna get old. You that have been fishing, some of y'all may know about it, but I think it's important that I teach y'all about this technique called the Texas rig. It's a very versatile technique as far as where you can throw this thing, what you can throw it into, and I guarantee you a day out on the lake is not complete without this technique. So let's get right into it. Okay, so what is a Texas rig? A Texas rig is basically a bullet weight, a bullet style weight, right up against a hook with pretty much your choice of soft plastic on it. At the end of this video, after I break some of these things down to you, you're gonna see me fishing it on one of these. You're gonna see me fishing it on a power bait. What is this right here? This is a, a power worm, PP and or tequila, tequila, it's a tequila something. I don't know the name that got rubbed off of the pack. But you're gonna see me fishing one of these. A nice juicy worm. A Cinco style bait. I buy Yum Dingers. Cause they're cheaper, you know me. So it's gonna be this color. And this green right here, this green with the pearl, is probably my favorite worm to fish. But I actually fish this color here more than I fish green pumpkin. But that's just me. Fishing is all about your opinion and this is my opinion and this is my favorite. This is my favorite right here, which is a watermelon pearl. This shad color right here, I like the ones that's got white on them. But that's just me. This is a smoke pearl right here. I think that might be all that you see me fishing in this video, catching some fish on. You can pretty much rig any soft plastic um, in a Texas rig. So I showed y'all, you got your line coming from your, from your rod, nothing special, bullet weight on there, and a hook. My favorite hooks to use are EWGs, and what an EWG is? It's an extra wide gap. So it's got a nice size bite on that hook. And I just have a lot of confidence in these. Offset at the top, so where it comes down, it's not a straight shank. It comes down, it's got a little neck on it, goes back and comes around. All right? How you wanna rig a, a Texas rig? A weedless presentation? That way you can really drag this thing along the bottom. Like this Texas rig is meant to be like drug. And when I say versatile, I mean versatile. Like you can put this bait anywhere. I'm talking about in grass, lay downs, right up on top of lay downs and rocks. I do have a problem getting hung up sometimes in rocks. Like this weight kind of goes up on the rocks and stuff like that. But you know, it's always going to be like that in fishing. You always going to lose some. When you rigging up a Texas rig, what you're going to want to do is show you here. So where this hook bends right here, where it comes down, that's about what a fourth of an inch, eighth of an inch, something like that. You want to take that hook and you want to put that right in the middle of that bait. And you want it to be facing the side that you're going to consider to be the bottom. Most bait fish have a light color bottom. That's the reason why I like this one the most. Or this style with a white on the bottom. So this is the side that I consider to be the bottom. So what I do is I take that hook. I put it down in there about an eighth of an inch, right? And I bring it out. Boom. I bring it out. It's in there like that. So 
the side that you consider the bottom pair that up with the hook upside down put it in by the eighth of an inch right in the middle try to keep this as straight as possible poke it out the bottom right now take that hook and rotate it as you pull it down that neck rotate it so now that hook is once again facing the bottom of that bait so now you're gonna find where that where that hook will be coming out so that's about right there in about the middle of that egg sac in this case right so you're gonna scrunch that up find that middle and you're gonna take it through the bait like so right and that's what you got now you can fish it like this like if you're fishing in a in a place that's you're not gonna get snagged but in a place that you can get snagged what you want to do is you want to take that hook you can either before you push it all the way through there you can take it and leave it inside of the worm like so you can take it and leave it inside of the worm and don't poke that hook all the way through so when you go, when that fish goes to bite it it's gonna chomp down on there it's gonna hit it at the head right nine times out of ten that bass gonna hit it at the head when it hits it and hails it in his mouth then you boom you set that hook and once you set that hook that hook is gonna it's gonna rip through that plastic i don't want to mess my worm up really because i'm gonna use it but it's gonna rip through that plastic and it's gonna that fish is gonna it's gonna hook it or what you can do is you put it in there and that's not always straight but uh you can put it in there and take it and scrunch it back up and hook it back on the inside okay hook it back on the inside so that way when, when it's running over stuff you're not gonna get hooked all right so the hooks that i like to use i use eagle claw the laser sharp hooks for this technique i like to use a three out or four out hook Okay, three out or four out extra wide gap hook is what I like to use. I use an extra wide gap hook whether I'm in the grass or lay downs, whatever. I like, I have confidence in the extra wide gap hook, so that's what I use. And that's what fishing is. It's all about having confidence in what you're fishing. That's how, that's the way you're gonna catch the most fish, is having confidence in the bait that you're using. Now what you're doing when you're fishing a Texas rig, you dragging it across the bottom or you're hopping it up and letting it fall. But I like to drag it across the bottom. And normally it's like the first lure that I use when I get to a spot because I'm fishing from the bank. I don't have electronics and the technology and everything. So I use this lure right here as my eyes. I can literally feel everything that's on the bottom when I drag this lure across the bottom. And I don't have to worry about getting hung on anything. The type of the type of gear that I like to fish uh, a Texas rig on. Personally, I like to fish it on a seven six medium fast action fishing rod. I like to use a bait caster, and I like to use about seventeen uh, pound test fluorocarbon, but I know a lot of people that watch my videos right now probably don't use bait casters. So I'm going to be fishing this Texas rig on an open face on a spin setup. It's going to be a spin rod setup and I'm going to be using 10 pound braid to a 12 pound mono leader. All right. 10 pound braid to a 12 pound mono leader on a seven foot medium power fast action spin rod spin setup all right and but in saying that like you probably have a fishing rod that you can go ahead and fish this texas rig on and you'll be fine like don't worry about going and buying new equipment 
to fish this Texas rig on. Just rig up the Texas rig and go fishing. I don't care if you got if you fishing with a Zebco 33 uh push button fishing rod, whatever you fishing with, take that rod and don't worry about going by nothing else and just fish with what you got and go get used, build up some confidence in that bait and then worry about going and getting new equipment. Like it's not about that. It's about going fishing and having fun. So what you've been fishing and having fun with, take that and fish this Texas rig. Worry about everything else later. Fishing a Texas rig, for me, in my opinion, it's about being able to cast as far as you can out, right? And pull that bait through as much water, as much real estate on that lake or body of water as you possibly can. That's what it's about for me. You don't need to pull it fast, like work it, Work it, pull up on your rod, reel in the slack. Work it, pulling up on your rod, reel in the slack. You do that. Another thing you can do is pop it, pop it, let it fall back down. I generally don't peg my bullet weights either when I'm fishing a Texas rig. Now, if I was flipping a Texas rig, into grass or cover or something like that, then yeah, I would peg it. But like I said, I'm fishing from the bank, you know? So most times I'm trying to cast this thing out as far as I can, and I'm trying to work it through as much water as possible. So I may pop it, especially if I feel like if there's a, a stump or something, I run up on a stump and I feel myself about to get hooked get get tangled up get hooked up under that rock i might pop it over there but not hard just when i feel it I might just give it a <laughs> pop it up over there pop it over there let it fall back down that weight is probably going to fall down before this bait but it's still going to pull it down and fishing with yum dingers they don't have as much salt in them as some of the other stick type baits uh, so what that means is it's going to sink slower. Now, unless I'm fishing in deeper water to where like I need to use a bigger bullet to help me maintain that bottom contact because that's what it's about. In my opinion, it's about bottom contact. If I'm fishing in deeper water, then yeah, uh, a different style with more salt in it might be the way to go right with a bigger sinker but if i'm fishing in seven feet of water or less i might not even use a bullet weight this big this one here is seven grams if i'm not mistaken this one here is seven grams so what's that a quarter ounce i might fish it in i might fish it with a with an eighth ounce bullet weight and, and another thing that eight ounce bullet weight, that one eighth ounce bullet weight is going to do is going to help you fish it slower because it's going to take longer for that bullet weight to get to the bottom paired with this young dinger, which is not the heaviest. It's going to take more for that weight to get to the bottom and stay on the bottom. It's going to take longer. So you're gonna have to be a whole lot more finessey with it in order to feel the bottom, in order to feel it. Because when you got a lighter weight on, when you pull it, it's gonna to wanna to come up. So you're gonna to have to be even more finessey with it to keep it on the bottom and feel for that bottom. And that's a good thing. That's gonna get you more bites. It's gonna get you more bites. Being finessey with it and feeling that bottom and dragging it along that bottom it's definitely going to get you more bites. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of different baits that you can use. But look, check it out. If you get... Just, 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 just trust me. Just trust me on this. If you get watermelon pearl or just 
straight uh like green pumpkin just a straight green pumpkin something like this color here or something just straight green pumpkin uh watermelon pearl or straight green pumpkin right a shag color right and something darker and something darker that's all you need like you don't you don't need a whole bunch of different colors and stuff like that like sometimes i feel like all these different colors in the bait section are for us more than it's for the fish don't get me wrong like sometimes like in the in, in the springtime like i'm throwing this right here and i'm tearing them up you feel me but you don't need this though you know what i'm saying like you don't need that like i just have confidence in that bait but you can I'm telling you, with these, something like this right here, these three colors right here, you're gonna catch all the fish you can handle. You're gonna catch all the fish you can handle on these baits right here. Now, with that being said, breaking down that, I just wanted, uh, now with that being said, Breaking down uh, what a Texas rig is, how to rig it weedless, what I'm fishing it on, what you could fish it on, um, as far as uh, where to put this bait and when to throw this bait, everywhere and anywhere. Like, there is no wrong way to fish this Texas rig. There's no wrong place to fish this Texas rig. And there is no wrong season to fish this Texas rig. Okay? Now I'm not saying that just because you put this in the water, that means you're gonna catch fish. You still need to know, you still need to know how to use your fish brain to spot out places that fish may be, that bass are ready to ambush some prey so uh, a bait fish or a crayfish because that's what we're mimicking with this we're mimicking shad we're mimicking bluegill we're mimicking crayfish when we uh when we fish this bait and me i still be thinking like i'm mimicking a worm like a worm or a lizard like yeah they make lizards or whatever but a lot of people when they talk about like Texas rigging, nobody ever really says anything about just a worm. Like, fish eat worms, you know what I'm saying? So, like, that's what we're mimicking. We're mimicking bait fish. We're mimicking crayfish. We're mimicking worms when we're uh, fishing a Texas rig. And one thing that I'm, I, I always want you to keep in mind is an injured bait fish. You know what I mean? A uh, injured bait fish, like make this look like an easy meal. Put this in their face, you know what I'm saying? Put this in their face and keep it in their face as long as possible. That's what we want to do with a Texas rig. The simplicity of it is what's going to catch you to fish. The simplicity of it is what is going to catch you to fish on a Texas rig. So, I don't want to make this video too long because I do got some fish catches that I want y'all to see. I know I like to see fish catches when I'm watching uh, videos and stuff like that. That's what I'll be watching for, the fish catches. So, yeah, let's get into some fish catches. Dang. I wasn't recording. That's messed up. Got him, though. Nice one. Not too bad. I wasn't even recording. Just real smooth, easy action. Working it real slow. I seen some fish blowing up on top. Not a bunch. But, uh. So I just, I don't think that they're super active right now. So I'm just working it real slow. Tell you what though, there's a lot of bluegill out in the water. 
There you go. That might be a bluegill, though. Might be a bluegill. Might be a bluegill. Nope, it's a bass. Man, you know, threw my worm off. Nothing too big, you know. But at least we got us one, right? Yes, sir. Skidding back in the water. Now I got fishy hands. So my bait going to smell like fish. That's a plus. That's why it's important to watch that line. I did feel them tick. I did feel the tick, but uh, I saw that line moving. There he is, folks. Ah, got him. All right, let it go. How'd he come off of there? See, a lot of people talk crazy to people that bass fish and they set their hook like they're trying to jerk the fish out of the water. But, uh, well, if you don't, you see what just happened to me, right? I lost them. Okay, so right here, I'm getting ready to get hung. My line is stuck. Now watch this. Tick, tick. And I just popped it free. Now, fish probably saw that. If it's a fish in the vicinity, it probably saw that pop up. And I probably got his attention. Don't take it from him before he got a good chance of getting it, you know. That water right there a little deeper than I thought it was. We on the bottom now. There you go. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Oh, it's a cat. That's why it's a nice one. Caught a catfish on stick bait. Look at there. Oh yeah, got
There you go. There it is. So if you made it this far, I appreciate you being here fishing with Sid. Love y'all, no doubt. If you have uh, any questions about the uh, braid to mono leader, that video should be posted somewhere right in here. I made a video just for y'all on how to rig up that braid to mono leader on the spin combo. So you can check that out. And that should be everything that you need to get out on the lake. I know there's plenty of other channels on YouTube. Appreciate y'all being here fishing with Sid. With that being said, good luck out there on the lake.